It's morning time, middle of the rut, and some weather has moved in here. The cold snap will normally get them a little more active, but during the storm, uh, you lose your visibility, and a lot of times they just hunker down and don't make noise. I'm gonna work into this timber, do some calling. There's some burn scars and uh, some open areas. And then I'm just gonna work into this knob where I know that they like to bed as long as the wind stays right. When I call in this kind of weather, I'm really trying to emulate a bull elk that's kind of gathering his herd and, and just moving through. But because he has a low visibility or whatever, he's just talking to the cows, trying to keep them together and, and just move to a new location. So I'll call as I walk, doing a few cow calls here and there. Trouble is if they aren't responding, sometimes you'll catch them coming in quiet, which is good that they're coming in, but it's really hard to predict what's going on. All my walls are covered in words, and while you sleep, I mark my goals. Stand so think clear. Don't let them see a hint of fear. I've got elk close. They just disappeared in the fog. I saw, I looked down and saw a trap. I looked up and there's a body right up Across from me, and it's 
cleared up quite a bit. Just good and bad, I guess. Oh, bull. For me to switch, I have to have a reason for it, not just because something new came out. I shot Hoyt for 19 years. It wasn't going to be a bow I could trust this year. I mean, I shot all the different bow brands. I shot Matthews, I shot Elite, went through the whole list, and, and Prime stuck out to me. Draw this one back, it's just there. You're not waiting for the wobble to come out of your hand. I drew it back and let it rip, and I was like, dang, order me one. And that was my story with Prime. It's like a five by five, but I'm still gonna get over there. I never pass anything up at a long ways when I say, ah, because with bow hunting, I'd rather be within range and then make my decision. Oh, just a glimpse, he's pushing cows around. Oh, he's a five by five, he's not bad. Plus elk is a main staple in my diet, so. Any bull's better than no bull. He's not bad. I'm just gonna try to get in there and see what happens. I'd rather pass an elk at 20 yards than uh, be 500 yards away and say no thanks. I'm gonna slip back around. Pretty crazy how so many large animals can just vanish like ghosts. I mean, from 30 something yards away, they just kind of filed off, but not fast. And now I can't find them. They could be here, or they could have just moved over to the other canyon. I don't know. They aren't making any noise, which you might just have to sneak in there and get a shot. Found the bull, but he's moving cows across the valley here. So I'm gonna go grab my stuff, regroup, and uh, make a new play. He's not a bad bull. Mature animal. I actually hear bulls bugling now off in the distance. So it might be turning on, the, the clouds are lifting. It's cold weather. I've got this group here and another group way over there. So, plenty of options. 
now that I can see, I might have to look for, uh, try to figure out where the bigger bulls are at. But that five point came in. I don't think he would have stopped me. <laughs> Steel is over three times stronger than aluminum, which means you don't have to fear that shoulder. Bam! Stronger and better penetration. So what does that really mean? Well, I guess that depends on how full you want your freezer. It's time to raise the stakes. Bring home the meat. Dead meat, dead meat. All steel broadhead, 320% stronger than aluminum. Well, the elk are across the valley here, same bull as I was on um, this morning. They just slowed up, and so I'm gonna head over there. It's about, it's a little walk, so I'm gonna head around and then try to cut off in front of them. Hopefully they'll bed up there or something, and I just, I think what I'll do is I'll probably end up just trying to spot and stalk in like it was mule deer, but most time when you're stalking a mule deer, it's uh, one or two animals, not a whole herd of them. You know, you actually can sneak in on elk fairly easily, but you gotta stay low to the ground and not have a bunch of stuff going on like cameras and bows and <laughs> all the good things that make solo hunter, solo hunter. Ooh, there they are. got the herd 300 yards away. There's a little bit of an opening that I don't know if I can sneak past. I might be able to put my pack here and crawl. The bull's still just pushing the cows around and the cows are just mostly uninterested feeding. Got a decoy, but I don't know if I'll be able to draw them across the, the canyon. It's a perfect rifle setup. If I can get in front of them, they should feed right toward me. Yeah, there they go. Here. See, I'm not making this up. still up there but the bull just went and chased the cow off got a pretty good seat for the old show that he's putting on just kind of running back and forth um, trouble is they aren't in a very good spot anymore so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull out and uh, come back this evening just let him settle down bed up it might be a little more active this afternoon Some big bull bugling up in this canyon. Drop my pack 
but they moved up the hill, so I'm gonna run and grab my pack and then head on up. For more information on the Solo Hunter rifle covers, vino harness system, and other accessories, or to connect with us on social media for exclusive photos and videos, log on to solohunter.com. because the big bull was just right in front of me but on the other side of some trees so they've split up now the main groups over there with the smaller well decent bulls but smaller bulls and the big bull I think is up in front of me somewhere crazy
uh, probably less than 10 yards. Whew. That was a cool morning. It was pretty intense. There's a lot of nice bulls running around, but that one came in and it was just so set up with the camera and everything. I decided, yep, yeah, that's going to be my bull this season. Oh, wow, pretty cool. Nice little five point. Fifteen yards. Great right shot, perfect shot. So cool. There he is. Wow, cool. That's awesome. Yeah, not a bad bull. Came in just right. Stood there broadside, so close. Sometimes you just got to take the opportunities you're given. That's pretty cool. Self-filming so hard. It's like when you get a really good opportunity on a decent elk, you almost have to take it. <sighs> now the work begins, it's gonna be two trips and I've just got my little day pack. So I've got all the back straps, neck meat, loose meat inside the pack. And then I'm gonna sling a hind quarter over my shoulder, go to the truck, get my bigger pack for the pack frame and then come back and pack out the rest. So two trips. Lots of miles and huh, hard work, but that's that's elk hunting, man. When I eat this meat, it's like you remember the hard work that put in you put into it. You remember this challenge of it. You remember sneaking into that animal, and it just makes it all worth it in the end. See the truck. Such a glorious sight. The flexors are feeling it. It's a pretty heavy pack. Three quarters, horns, and a camera, which my squid struggling face is from trying to one arm this camera while walking. Ah, the truck. Ah, yeah. Nice.